Dr. Wachter, how are you? Can you hear us okay? I am terrific. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for coming on with us. It's My pleasure. Uh, Exciting to talk with you. Dr. Wachter coming to us as professor and chair of the Department of Medicine at UCSF. And I think that, uh, you know, in, in this day, in this moment, in this week, there's uh, light at the end of the tunnel and hopeful news. And we wanted to just drill down a little bit on some of the, 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 the vaccine questions that we have. I know that there are a, a, a lot of general questions that I've seen all over the news. But one thing I was wondering is once the, the vaccines are approved by the FDA and will be distributed to us after the first responders and the essential workers, will we get a choice as to which ones we might take? I'm guessing you won't. I'm guessing that uh, that that uh, your CVS might get the Moderna vaccine and the and the Walgreens might get the Pfizer. At least so far, those two vaccines, which are the likeliest, uh, the, the two that are going to get approved in the next couple of weeks, seem to be equally effective, have a similar rate of side effects in terms of what you'll feel after a day or two. So I don't think there's much difference between them. The main difference is the Pfizer has to be stored in this uh, subarctic freeze. And so probably a little bit harder to get that if you're living in rural communities, for example, you need a place that has a, this huge freezer. It's not like your kitchen freezer. Um, the, the, the bigger question I think is gonna be the third vaccine that's likely to get approved is the AstraZeneca one that seems a little bit less effective than the first two. The first two are 95%, the second, this third one might be 70%. And that's where things may get a little dicey where uh, you probably, you might prefer one of the ones that's been proven to be more effective. Right fighting for one of the other yeah. ones and are, are you based on your knowledge and what you've read seen studied are you worried about are you thinking about any sort of long-term downside to taking any of these vaccines i'm thinking much more about the long-term downside of getting covid mm. it's just it, it's, it's really not a close call at this point mm -hmm. you know we've had almost three hundred thousand people die of covid some of the people who didn't die have lingering side effects that go on for months and maybe years. So that's what we know. Yeah. What we know about the vaccines is that in trials of more than 50,000 people, we've not seen anything that indicates some sort of long-term uh, long bad side effect. Now, does that mean it's impossible that one might emerge later? No, it's not impossible. But in our experience with other vaccines, if you don't see something in the first three or four months, it's really unlikely that something bad is gonna crop up late. Uh, so, but I, I think if, if you're going to say, I need to be 100% sure there's nothing bad that can happen with the vaccine, you know, you, you may, uh, some of those folks may wait, but while they're waiting, if they get COVID, the chances they're going to get really sick and have a, something terrible happen are far, far, far higher than that happening from the vaccine. So Dr. Walker, uh, let's assume one of us gets the vaccine, then we're exposed to COVID-19. What happens? Well, here's the stuff we know. We know that the chances that you will get sick from COVID are close to zero. Uh, the chances that you'll get very sick from uh, from COVID are almost zero. And, and, and this, this is a remarkable piece of uh, data. In the two trials, the Pfizer and the Moderna, f you know, they're giving half the people vaccine, half the people placebo. Yeah. 40 people got severe cases of COVID, sick enough to go to the hospital or have a really low oxygen essentially all 40 were in people who got placebo. Now, one of them, this just came out today, one of them in the Pfizer trial was, uh, was uh, characterized as having had a severe case. It turned out that that person's oxygen level dipped to a slightly low level, like for a few minutes and then went back up. So essentially 100% protective against getting the kind of COVID you don't wanna get, which is sick enough to go to the hospital, go to the ICU or, uh, or maybe die. The things that we don't know or how long it will last. We think it'll be at least a year, might be many years. We don't know for sure how many. And then I think as you're getting, Ryan, getting at Ryan, is we don't know for sure that you, if you're exposed to COVID, you can't get it in your nose and your mouth and have it there and therefore be capable of transmitting it, transmitting it to another oh, person, which means until enough people have been vaccinated in the population that the virus dies out, we should all still wear masks. Hmm. I think what we're gonna find is that it's possible you can still catch COVID and carry it and give it, but the amount of virus you're gonna have in your nose and mouth is gonna be far lower than you would otherwise uh, have, and therefore you're gonna be either not infectious at all or only a little bit infectious. Uh, but, but I think we'll know that in about two or three months. The studies are ongoing now to figure out, does it just prevent COVID, severe COVID, or does it also prevent you from carrying it 
and infecting others. That part we're just not sure about. And when do you think we'll have visibility on the duration of the vaccine? Six months, a year, two years? How long will it last? When will we know that? It's sort of by how long we are into the vaccination, really. I mean, we're kind of getting information uh, that's a little bit more theoretical based on sort of markers of immunity from, from what we know from other vaccinations that really are indicating it's not going to be a few months. It's going to be a year, mm-hmm. maybe two, maybe three, maybe longer than that. But this is the sort of thing that until we follow, you know, a, a hundred million people who've gotten vaccinated for two years, and then in two years, if we start seeing cases of COVID come back, we'll know that that's it, that you now yeah, have to right. re wow. So it'll, but, yeah, I mean, we'll all sort of learn together. I'm sorry, yeah. I missed you. No, we'll, we'll all sort of see this together. I mean, everyone will, will be watching. Well, welcome to COVID. We, you know, on January 1st of this year, everybody in the world knew the same about this virus, which was nothing. So one of the interesting parts of the last year is we've all learned about this together. And that's part of what's been complicated is, well, we didn't think you could be infectious if you're not sick. Then we figured out, well, yes, you can. And we weren't sure that masks work. And then we figured out, well, they work incredibly well. You know, we thought maybe touching things was a, was a way you could get COVID. Well, it turns out that's not, it's not very infectious that way. So yeah, we've all been learning about this together and the same thing's gonna be true with the vaccines. Uh, you know, we're gonna learn uh, about how long it lasts by seeing how long it lasts. So based on where you sit, Dr. Wachter, when do you think the vaccines, we, when should we be thinking about the vaccines being available to the public? It depends who you are in the public. So, so the first doses of vaccine, it looks like the FDA is going to approve it in the next three, four, five days. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's the Pfizer, the Moderna, probably a week later. Then there are going to be millions of doses of vaccine that begin rolling out to two populations. One is healthcare workers. So I'm probably going to get mine in a week or 10 days, and Mm -hmm. I will be first in line if they let me. Um, And to people in nursing homes who are the highest risk uh, people in the pandemic. The next group, essential workers, people, uh, firefighters, police, uh, teachers, uh, people who work in, uh, uh, in, in, in food packing, uh, who work in the grocery store. The next group, people over 65 or people who have pre-existing conditions. When you add up those groups, you get to 144 million people. We'll wow. probably hit that group of, uh, 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 we'll produce that much vaccine probably by March. So if you don't fit any of those groups, so you're not an essential worker, you're under 65 and you're healthy, and the question is, when can I go to Walgreens or CVS to get my vaccine? Probably April. Okay. Well, listen, we- I have a question. We've been through so much that we'll be here before we know. Go ahead, sis. What about kids? Are kids gonna need the vaccine? So the the trials have not included kids yet. They're, They're expanding to include kids to see whether the vaccines are safe and effective. No reason to think they won't be effective. Uh, they've been effective in every age group. The thing we, the group we were worried about was older people. Will they be effective in older people? It turns out they are. Uh, but you don't want to start trialing them with kids until you're sure that it's safe in, in older people. The trials of kids are going to roll out now. It's interesting because the kids have a much lower risk of getting sick from COVID. And the biggest risk in the schools is the teachers. So if we can get the rate of, of the virus in the community way down and we can get all the teachers vaccinated, I don't think it's going to actually be all that important that the kids get it. I hope they do, and I hope it's safe for them. But it may be that the schools are perfectly safe because there's just not a lot of virus in the community and the teachers and the custodians are safe. That's probably good enough to be really comfortable about the schools. I don't know your excitement scale, but on a scale of one to ten, how excited are you that this is all happening now? Uh, Eleven. Okay. All right. The guy gets excited. I like a doctor gets excited. Uh, I'm tempered, tempered by the fact that that you know the situation now for COVID is terrible. I mean, it really, yes. Yes. it is really, really, really bad, and we're going to have to hunker down and get through the next few months because it's going to be nasty. And January is going to be bleak. January is going to be bleak. You know, it's, it's it's sort of when do these curves cross? When are enough people vaccinated that you begin to to damp down the amount of virus? Uh, while the virus is rampaging and be- Christmas is keeping is going to get people together and the weather's colder and all that stuff. So it's probably not till February till things get better. We've got to really hunker down for the next couple months and get through it. Yeah. It's like you don't want to lose the last battle before the war's finally over. Exactly right. Exactly right. Great to see you. Uh, thank you for doing what you do. Honestly, you and your, your yeah, staff, we you. appreciate yeah. you coming on, doctor. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Be well. See you later. Bye bye. Dr. Bob Walker, Professor Chair, Department Mm -hmm. of Medicine, UCSF.